What is going on, Savage here? Hope that you're having a good day, and I hope that Warzone's been treating you well. In today's video, we'll be going over a viewer-submitted gameplay. This is a 23-kill win during solos, and through the course of this video, I'll be breaking down everything that he does from circle rotation to map awareness to target prioritization, and also choosing what to go after when you just can't figure out what to do. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are closing in on 50,000 subscribers. Let's go ahead and achieve that goal by the end of the month. Also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And as always, if you guys are looking for teammates or other people to play with, make sure you join our Discord page. The link to that will be in the description below. The purpose of the series is to help everyone become better at Warzone. I have four years of history with Battle Royales. I've been playing them since almost the dawn of the genre. I, and I have learned a lot about strategy and rotating and hopefully can pass that on to you guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, in this gameplay, we'll be covering my dude King, who I don't know who landed here uh, because this is exactly when the video started. So I'm not sure who exactly landed near us, but he was able to pick up the scavenger bounty and now he's trying to locate a target. I'm assuming somebody's here just based on how much he's using the heartbeat sensor there to blips. I hear footsteps. All right, now in this position right here, dangerous, right? One, you have the ground loot scar. That's really not one of the best weapons by any stretch of the imagination. If you know someone's about to hop down, just back up a little bit, put yourself at an angle with the door. That way, if he does jump down with like a Bruin or something that's more powerful than your gun, you know, he won't have a direct line of sight on you. You'll be hugging the corner. And if you start shooting, you can kind of duck off. So I'm not a fan of your positioning here since you already knew he was coming. Two, um, you also were pretty close to him when he jumped down. So I'm surprised he didn't get a melee hit on you. A uh, very dangerous situation to be in, especially when melees are, you know, so powerful in this game. So again, what I would do in this situation is just kind of sit right here and watch it at an angle. All right, this isn't the biggest of deals, guys, but I do want to go over this just because staying near cover needs to become a habit, especially in situations that you know you're about to have immediate combat with an enemy. We knew he was about to come down there. Um, that's why he had stopped and frozen up, right? But all you had to do is just sidestep right here because the moment he comes down, he's going to look directly straight, right? He's going to be looking down to get in the hole and then he's going to just look up. So he's going to be facing this direction, most likely. So the goal here between this is instead of just taking on the full brunt of his weapon while you're shooting, if you're like, if he breaks your armor before you break his, you can just sidestep, wait for him to finish spraying and praying and then repeat and get shots off. Granted, if he pushes you, then you're in the option to kind of back up and get a little bit better of an angle right here. You're very vulnerable, but right here, you're favored because he's vulnerable. He's got no cover. You do. I know it seems very minute guys, but just the simplest of sidestepping can help you win a gunfight dramatically. All right, he did get meleeed, um, but he was able to get the kill off. Now, honestly, that wasn't a huge mistake, uh, but it's little things like that that can literally be the difference between you winning the game and losing the game, you getting a 20 kill game and you getting, you know, 19 kill game, just based off the fact that you need to be aware of different situations while you're in the middle of a fight. But we did have two heartbeats on the heartbeat sensor, so uh, we are not really sure where the next guy is. But we have the search, so we're going to go ahead and... Oh, there he is right there. I also want you guys to notice, while he was in the middle of fighting that, I heard a door to the left-hand side, which makes me believe there's another player here. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. Now, one thing you do in a fight like this, if you don't feel comfortable going on a 1v1 fight, you could rotate to the next door on the other side of the building, and you can get up the stairs that way. There's the other player. That dude is a little slide canceling bunny right there. Holy shit. Let's talk about both of these guys just real quick, right? One, I have no idea what this dude was doing. He he knew you were in a gunfight. He had to have had, you know, ears. He had to have been able to hear you. So at that moment, the moment I hear someone in a gunfight, I'm not just going to sprint to them in the middle of the street. Um, hug the wall, hug a building, just get away, you know, find a better position to start a gunfight because again, at least you had a trash can and, and a building to work with. He was literally in the middle of nowhere. Let's talk about the guy right here. This really isn't a huge deal, but this guy just ran right towards where he last heard the action. He had no idea, you know, if anyone died, he had no idea where you went to, where the enemy went to. So again, in this situation, if I was the enemy, just like I told you guys with the guy we're spectating, work your way to the other side of the building go up the staircase, get on the roof, and then come down on the enemy. You don't want to just funnel in through the door, especially if you think that a fight just took place there and someone died there. What are the chances of you going in that door and not getting the same contest? So this place right here, also, I was not a fan of. 
All right, but we still have the original guy. We still have uh, n Numero Uno on the roof, and I was just about to say that. Guys, when you know that there's a player in a building, especially buildings like this, where they're going to go to rooftop to get on the high ground, you got to be very careful of how you put yourself in the open in order to get loot. Now, if you need loot, if there's a satchel there, if there's some armor placed and you desperately need it, if there's ammo, I'm fine with that. But overall, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you can get picked real easily um, because you put yourself out there. Now, nothing against these lobbies or anything, but I will say most of the lobbies that I get into, the moment they hit you, you're dead. You know, if they connect one shot, they connect all the shots and you're, you're basically fried. So if you risk your life putting yourself in the open like that, it's just not going to end well for you, no matter what lobby you're in. But we are sitting pretty with kills right now. We got three kills. It's still the beginning, not even, you know, still around 120 players yet. Um, I still would push that building, you know, it looks like this guy may be pushing you actually. Now, again, you want to learn the heartbeat. If you're going to utilize the heartbeat, you need to really figure out what the depth of the heartbeat actually is. That way, when you do get a blip, you can tell, oh, shit, he's pushing closer. The moment we got him on heartbeat, I knew he wasn't on the building anymore. That's way too far. You might get a little graze on the edge, but halfway down your heartbeat sensor, nah, that's really close. Um, And, of course, here he is, pushing in the building, going to the next high ground. Dude, he would, oh, I was, oh, man. Oh, you hate to see it. Damn. Damn. Okay, so this is getting into the fight. Let's talk about the guy he was originally hawking down, right? The guy he was originally in a fight with, the first fight we really wanted to take place in before we got the other two kills, Um, that's the guy who ended up pushing the building and getting to, you know, the second floor. Judging by the audio, I knew that he hadn't gone up yet. I knew he was on that second floor that you were about to be on, and he was just checking the hallways, either for you, for loot, who knows, but that's where he was at. Now, as he ran back to you, I thought he was going to come around the corner and start shooting you, and again, just because of the angle you were at, because how close to the corner you were, if he would have pushed you, he would have been the one to kill you. So I'm not a fan of you sitting on the staircase just kind of waiting for him, because again, we don't know what weapons he has. We don't know how good he is. You don't want to put yourself in a close quarter combat situation when you don't have a decent weapon, you're not that confident in your gunplay. You want to create a little separation, a better angle, or even have some cover, um, which leads me to the second point. Now, I wouldn't have predicted this. I don't think anybody could predict this. No one heard him. I didn't hear him. I don't know if you guys heard him. I didn't hear shit. Um, but this guy came out of absolutely nowhere, crouch walk. And I always tell you guys, don't crouch walk. You know, a lot of people probably look at that and they're like, Savage, I crouch walking against me kills. I mean, I got this dude to kill too, but I guarantee you, this man's not winning the game. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate way to die and just going back to what I said in the first kill when you got the kill of the guy that came down the ladder shoot, right? I said you wanted to have a little bit of an angle that way you can have some cover that way if you get shot at you can kind of dip off You know again, no one could predict that this guy coming in the bottom floor But if you would have been at a better angle hugging the wall, you know hugging some kind of cover the moment You got shot at you wouldn't have been in the middle of the staircase. You could have rounded the corner and got to cover all right, here we are landing back at the search reject. Now, this leads me to a point that I really want to make, and it's actually a good idea. Um, when you guys pick up a search objective and there's other enemies around you, you don't have to get the search objective right away, right? You're the only player that can open them. If you die in combat after getting all the search objectives because you didn't kill everybody around you, you run the risk of losing the money. But if you go ahead and engage everybody there and you end up you know, dying, going to the gulag, coming back, your search objectives are still there for you to get. You still have the potential to have the money from it. It's really a win-win situation. So if you're having a hot drop, there's a lot of people around you. Don't worry about getting the search objectives. If they come to you, that's fine. But don't worry about putting yourself in bad situations in order to pick it up because you can always get it later when you come back from the gulag or when you finish winning the fight in the compound. But we still know there's two people here, minimum. And there's a vehicle on the way. So you need to play cautious. Landing on this building, again, this is one of the better buildings in the compound. And just judging by the lobby you're in, they love camping, right? Unfortunately, this is kind of what it is. It's a campy lobby. Um, so just be very careful um, on how you play these games. The vehicle's pushing up right now. Oh. Yo, scared the shit out of me, bro. <laughs> Yo, people really play like that. All right, so let's talk about what the enemy did wrong real quick. Um, he was watching the ladder shoot just like you were in the exact same position that you were in. That literally confirms my first point, exactly what I was saying. Because that guy wasn't hugging this room right here, and I'll show you in a demonstration right after this explanation, but because he wasn't hugging this wall, the moment he got shot, he had nowhere to go. He had you down to 5 HP, fam. 5 HP. If he would have had a little bit more cover, and he could have just sidestepped as you were shooting at him, 
he would have been able to win the fight easily. Easily. There's no question about it. All right. Just like in the first demonstration, we're putting the enemy in this position. So this is the exact same demonstration um, but from the enemy standpoint. So again, he heard you land up there. There's no way he didn't. Plus, he was sitting here waiting for you, right? He was sitting right here, actually. So him being right here, what did this do for him? Nothing. It got him killed, right? Because when he's shooting at you, he can barely sidestep, right? This is as much as he can go. So that's real easy to track right there. But if he would have been standing right here, remember, he had you down to five health. If he just would have sidestepped and you missed one or two bullets and then unpeaked and kept shooting, he would have won the fight instantly. There's no question about it. You would have lost that fight. Despite what you may believe, the person who jumps down here is vulnerable, especially when there's two or three people sitting here staring at you. But normally, guys, if you know an enemy's coming down, make sure you're, again, keeping your body near cover. So go ahead, line up your crosshair at the edge of the door. Make sure that only half your body is peeking. That way, one, your hitbox is smaller because only half your body is out there instead of your whole body. So the chance of him hitting you is even harder, right? He's got to be more accurate with the shots. Two, again, dude, you have the option to get the shots off. I know the laser's hitting the wall, but again, that's not where the bullets actually travel to. So based on this position, again, shoot. And as soon as his armor plates get broken, I would unpeak. Let the enemy keep shooting bullets. And the moment the enemy thinks you're running away and he starts to push you, repeat and get more shots on, right? Again, five health was the difference in that fight. Um, if he would have been near cover, you would have lost the fight. As far as you jumping down there, I mean, I'm not going to correct nothing. It, it is what it is. You wanted to go in the building. You went in the building. There was Becky Joe camping like a little girl. But we do have a bleep over here on this building still. This is a really freaking awkward start, to say the least. This is a really awkward st start, man. Everyone's kind of just finding their buildings and, and camping in it and loving it. Now, again, just like I said, you could choose to go get the search objective and go ahead and get your loadout, or you can choose a fight. I personally choose a fight in this guy. One, you have a dead silence. Boom. What's the easiest way to push a compound or a building or go upstairs or a ladder? Dead silence. You need a deadie. You have to have a deadie. You got a deadie. You're good there. You have stopping power. You're good there. You're literally two for two right now as far as having an advantage. We know damn well the boy in the blue room has no, has no loadout because he hasn't left. He's been camping since day one, right? So at this point... No, go ahead and do what you want to do, but I definitely recommend fighting the guy in blue roof. Again, I know you want to go ahead and get your search objective. That's fine, but you still have four minutes on this. You still have four minutes. You got plenty of time. Push the guy on the roof and get the kill. Dead silence is your best friend. Make sure you're utilizing it. And you have a big birthday coming up too. And the guy on blue roof is literally on the blue roof just shooting at people, which again is, is an awesome thing because he's distracted with everything around him. So as you were pushing the rooftop, again, easy kill. He's not going to be watching the ladder. He's not going to be watching the hallways. He's up there shooting at everything that moves. He's shooting at Big Bertha. He's shooting at leaves. He's shooting at bushes. He's blowing out windows. Who knows what he's doing? But he's, you know, he's not any competition for you. Now, I'm not ever going to tell you guys a C4 truck again. This, this, this C4 nerf was absolutely atrocious. Now, judging by your shot just now, I will tell you, try turning down your ADS sensitivity. And I want you to notice the jerky movement. Now, I'm not putting you on blast. I just want you to be aware um, of, of your, your sensitivity, right? All right, so we're originally aiming at the tree. And I want you guys to notice he's got 134 bullets in his gun. And then when people pull the trigger on a controller, I know this because I used to be a controller player. When people pull the trigger, they do something that people do when they shoot a real gun. It's called milking the grip, right? I'm going to give you a quick rundown as fast as I can. So basically, when you're, when you're squeezing the grip and you pull the trigger, your other three fingers have a tendency to move with your finger naturally, which in turn makes you jerk your gun, right? That's why I learned in the police academy. Um, so the same concept with controllers. Do I have one near me? I do. Perfect. Look, I have my crappy scuff. Guys, do not buy scuff. They're piles of shit. But anyway, um, I'm holding the scuff, and a lot of people, when they pull the trigger, their controllers will move for almost the same purpose. One, either their fingers are hitting the trigger so hard, it's actually moving the controller and in turn your finger resting on it will move as well or two just like with the weapon you pull the trigger your other three fingers kind of move the controller as well which makes your stick jerk so this to me kind of tells me you may need to work on your trigger discipline relax your hands or turn down your ads sensitivity again just the most minute movement when your ads is drastic and that's also a reason why i recommend turning it down but once you guys notice how far it jerks to the right when he still has 134 bullets in his gun. Right before he shoots, it jerks. Now, I don't see an enemy here. I don't know exactly what he's shooting at, I'm going to be honest. Granted, you know, console recordings aren't as clear as what they're actually seeing, so I'm sure there is somebody there 
maybe running behind the tree or something. But regardless, that's where he wanted to start shooting. And the moment he starts to pull his trigger, his gun jerks to the right. And then finally, the bullet starts to fire at the wall. There's no one here for sure. And then I want you to notice he's trying to get it back to the tree, okay, or where the enemy's at, which I would assume is a tree because that's originally where he lined up the crosshair. And then as he's trying to correct the mistake that his finger originally made, he overshoots, we'll assume again that this is the target. He overshoots the target. That to me is a sign that your ADS sensitivity needs to be turned down. I'm not sure where you have it set to right now. If it's set to a one, which is a standard, turn down your ADS sensitivity to, you know, a 0.4 or to a 0.6. Kind of play around with it. Um, it's really not that drastic. It's almost like if you adjust your normal sensitivity, it's, it's very hard to get used to. If you're trying to up it from seven to eight, from eight to nine, from nine to 10 to 20. It's, it's a little difficult to get used to. It's gonna take you some time to kind of get used to it and practice that muscle memory. However, when you change your ADS sensitivity, there's no getting used to it. It's either better or it's worse. So it's something that I would definitely um, try to take a look at. Now also looking at the minimap, there is a dot, there is a red blip sitting on or inside of Burger Town. So also be aware of that, but let's continue. Oh, he's actually shooting at you, rip, rip. As far as the enemy's concerned there, he shouldn't have lost that fight, in my opinion. If he would have jumped up on that vehicle and then jumped up onto the roof, he would have had a great position. The moment you start shooting at him, he could just go prone, sit up, get some shots on you, go prone, stand up, get some shots on you. He could do whatever he needed to do in order to outwork you and outplay you. But he just kind of full charged you. Um, granted, you had dead silence, so I'm sure he didn't know you were right there. But the fact that he went that direction makes me think he did think you were there. So again, so again, the way I would have played that fight if I was the enemy is vault on the car, vault on the roof get the high ground and gets the easy shots. But now we're in a position where there's really no one around us that we know. There's no signs of an enemy being around us. There's no shots. There's no blips. There's no vehicles. You know, there, there's no heartbeat scans. There's nothing. Um, this will be a time to go ahead and finish the search objective and go get your loadout. All right. Now we do have a vehicle coming right for you now. Um, I don't know if he got out. He did not get out. Never mind. You actually have two vehicles around you. I see we have a lot of vehicles around us and we're on the edge of the circle. Now, free to let drop is right in front of you, but it's going to be hot and it's out in the open. It's going to be a very difficult one to get because again, I'm sure other people's loadout drops are there as well as a lot of enemies rotating into safety, as well as of course, the, the enemies that are already on um, UAV. UAV because uh, of the vehicles and also it's on TV station or it's by TV station, which is usually a hot spot for, you know, a couple campy better Joes. There's one of them. Get his ass. Get his ass. Run him over. Boom, baby. God, I love to see it, dude. Splat that little fly. I love it. But we're sitting really good money. Now you got to be quick because there's a vehicle pushing your right side. Need to be fast. Need to be fast, right? Ricky Bobby. Misclick. I ain't going to judge. I do it all the time. <laughs> All right, again, like I always tell y'all, if you're scanning um, in a window, there's a guy right there. If you're scanning in a window, your shots didn't really look that bad right there, honestly. Your ADS sensitivity didn't look bad. Maybe that was a fluke. I don't know. Or maybe it was just that gun. But yeah, you look fine right there. But anyway, um, when you're looking in a window, stand back from the window and scan. You don't want to put your face right against it because when enemies see you standing in the window, they're going to shoot at you. But if you keep yourself in the shadows, keep yourself at an angle, the odds of an enemy actually being able to scan and see you in a window is a lot less than if you just put your face to it and start licking the window, right? You don't want to do that. Don't be a window licker. That was a perfect time for UAV. I love it, dude. Now, again, dude, you're in a very campy lobby. I really feel bad almost. And you have an enemy over here as well going to the drop. Remember, even when you're ADS on an enemy, you want to be scanning the rest of the map. Basically, you know what? Here's a way to approach gameplay. Play the game as if you're analyzing your own gameplay. Don't just let me be a voice in your head. While you're ADS, look around and be like, okay, what else is going on? Now, if you see an enemy and you're trying to shoot at them, don't look around while you're shooting. Keep your peripherals open, but stay focused. Um, but the fact that you're waiting for someone to peek and it's gonna be really hard to see him in the window too, especially if he's standing back from it and not window licking it, right? But uh, definitely be aware of this guy. Now, I wouldn't shoot at him right now, mostly because he's got a lot of cover um, and he's more of an immediate threat, I guess, kind of. So because I'm observant of this guy right here, I would instantly move over to the right, 
get a little bit more cover, maybe even mount, head glitch, whatever you want to do, um, and try to win the fight on both of these guys. All right, you spot him. I like the fact that you didn't start shooting at him just because, right? And you have another enemy behind you. Holy shit, brother. This is a fun little lobby, man. It's like a field day. I love it. All right, this guy's actually coming up to you, which is perfect. Bad mistake on his part because you do have the loadout as a as a form of cover. Yeah, I would definitely still recommend lowering your ADS sensitivity. In fact, in fact, honestly, King, I want you to lower your ADS sensitivity to a to a point four to point six, and I instantly want you to maybe even send me another gameplay, you know, a week or two down the road. And I would love to see how far you've come as with accuracy overall. Your accuracy isn't that bad. You're not at the bottom of the barrel. I'm not trying to hate on you again. Um, but dude, you would be such a laser, dude, if you had that ADS sensitivity just toned in. You stun the outside and you got a hit. I love that. You also have dead silence too. If you want to push that building, now's the time to do it. Use that deadie and push into the other window. Because you threw the stun on this side of the building, he's going to think you're coming on this side of the building. He's going to be prepared for this. He almost got you again. Because that's where the concussion came from, that's where he's focused on. That's where he's he's saying, okay, they threw it this way, so they've got to be here they, because of the angle, right? Wrong. You have dead silence. You popped it. Awesome. But I would have pushed him from the other side instead of risking. Again, he got you down to about 40% health. It's too close for comfort in a fight you should win without even being scathed. Also, trigger discipline is a must, guys. Holy crap. <laughs> what is this lobby, bro? Yo, you've gotten in more fights in the world's smallest square footage of area I've ever seen. And they're just coming back. They're just, they're just walking up to you and waving as you shoot them in the head. This is awesome. Wait, how old is this footage? Is this buyback stimulus, bro? Uh, now it makes sense, dude. I love stimulus. They need to make this shit permanent. I love me some stimulus, dude. <laughs> All right, let's go. I didn't even notice it, guys. I'm the most observant guy in the world, and I didn't even fucking realize it till just now. Anyway, as I was saying about trigger discipline, when you're shooting at an enemy, if you lose track of them or you're not getting any more hit markers through a bush, just stop shooting. Save yourself the reload because the worst thing to happen is if you get his plates broken, then you start spraying and praying. You run out of ammo, the enemy instantly unpeaks, gets some shots on you and you're caught up reloading and you can't really do anything to contest the enemy. Um, so trigger discipline, shooting when you have the enemy in the crosshair or you think you do through cover or something like that, that's fine. Um, but if you're just lost sight of them and your crosshair is going all over the place, at that point, just stop spraying. It will be harder to combat the recoil and try to recover than just stop shooting, reline up your sights and take more shots. Right, here we are at a buy station sitting on a lot of money. Now, I know you need a little bit of money to, to get yourself back in stimulus, but you definitely buy more than just that. There is an enemy relatively close to you up here at the truck. To a little bit to the left, you can, you know, go contest him. Fortunately, you don't have any more stuns. Unfortunately, you don't have a dead silence. By the way, I love the fact that you're rocking stuns, brother. I um, absolutely love it, dude. I would love to hear you guys' feedback in the comment section if you've recently switched from the stuns based off what I've been saying. Uh, and let me know how it's going for you. Let me know if your kill count's increasing, if you're feeling more confident pushing in buildings than you were before. Um, do you miss the heartbeat? Did you switch back to the heartbeat? What is uh, what is the verdict on my recommendation? I th it looked like the enemy looked right at you, and then he just didn't rotate around the wall. He just sat there. I don't know. Maybe he didn't, but don't do that. <laughs> That's the only tip I can give for that. Now, because we're on the edge of the circle, again, people will be coming here, um, and it's a great spot to sit and gatekeep because you can guarantee that people will be coming this direction. Now, when you're gatekeeping the edge, you got to be really careful. You, you don't gatekeep and overstay welcome too long. The last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position where you're trying to gatekeep one target and you end up having to gatekeep four or five, and you become the main focus of the fire, right? You don't want to get yourself caught in the open. Movement is key. If this enemy right here would have, you know, been a little bit better with movement, he, when he got shot, he could have instantly just dove and slide canceled to the right, got behind the rock, 
use the rock as cover, and then the moment you pushed him out in the open, I would have used the rock just to get my shots on you and hopefully get the kill. All right, and again, like I said, you're on the edge, so you're going to have more people coming through, and you do have a person um, over by the plane. And he sounds like he's in a gunfight himself. Now, it's an awesome spot to be at because he's going to have to leave the plane eventually. He will. And he's probably going to run out in the open and... Oh, shit. Oh, he pushed so close, brother. Holy shit. He pushed fast. Again, sending a lot of money. Go ahead and get another UAV up. Keep running with the UAVs. I love that. Dude, I cannot wait to play Stimulus again. Oh, my God. This makes me so happy. It wasn't the guy in the plane. It was a whole different enemy. All right, cool. Like I said, dude, the last thing you want to do is be gatekeeping, get caught up in the middle of a fight, and having to 1v4 and 1v5 people. Luckily, these guys are tunneling in on you one at a time, making it really easy for you. Um, but yeah. This guy floating above you? No, he's running. Yeah, he's running, running. Maybe. He might be in the air. The arrow's pointing up, but because the ridge is higher over there, he could be running. He's not moving that fast. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Sorry, guys. That was my husky. So right here, um, I saw that you saw the bleep. Again, use the mini map. The arrows indicate if they're higher than you or lower than you. This guy's clearly on your level because there's no arrows. And there is the other target that I thought was on the ground level. He had an arrow above him, and again, because of the ridge, just because he's higher than you doesn't mean he's in the air, right? So, you're going ahead and shooting the first guy, and again, now you're in a position where you're going to have to 1v2 these enemies. I like that. Thank you. I was about to say, most people, let's rewind that, because that was, that was five head right there. So, most people, when they throw the stun, they would instantly dive to the wall, jump over the wall, and then shoot the target that's over here laying prone to the right, right? But that would get you killed because you have homeboy over here. Granted, he may be in the trailer. He may be laying under the trailer. You may be safe, but don't put yourself in a position if you don't know. So I love the fact that it looked like he started to make a run for it and then instantly beeline to the side to protect himself from the other enemy. Comes around the corner. And the guy's just pretending to be a tree stump. Gets absolutely annihilated. This guy looks like he's going... He's about to... <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, honestly. I am both. Wait, what do you say? I don't know. In both the enemy situation, the guy by the vehicle, the moment you got concussed, just get in the vehicle, right? Get in the vehicle, kind of back it up a little bit, drive it a little bit to safety instead of just laying there, taking the concussion, letting the enemy push me right hand side. And get shots on you when you're laying next to no cover. You're in front of cover. You're you're near cover. There's cover behind you, but that doesn't help you from the target that just concussed you, right? So he definitely should have gotten the vehicle. I'm um, running around the vehicle. You know, you're stunned. You're not gonna be able to do that without getting shot in the back. So get get in the vehicle and buy a little time. Now, on the flip side, the enemy right here. You know, the moment he heard you get in the gunfight, he should have already pushed this wall. He should have pushed this wall and not allowed you to vault back in the compound. He messed up by sitting there and playing around, sitting at the front of the trailer. Um, but it is what it is. And he paid the ultimate price. Now, again, you're sitting a lot of nice money. Another UAV, dude. This is like a perfect... Stimulus mode is a perfect, like, game type to go ahead and practice utilizing your UAVs correctly. Timing UAVs of when to do it, when not to do it, where do you feel most comfortable using the UAVs. I love... I love Stimulus. It's the greatest thing in the world. All right, so we skipped ahead a lot, right? Nothing really has happened in the past seven or eight minutes. Uh, he died once, lost his gear, and now he's got his stuff back. Now, we're in the in-game circle. There's only 10 enemies left, and he's sitting on 19 kills. Pretty good stimulus mode game. Not gonna lie. You have one jackass driving a vehicle around. Guys, prevent yourselves from hopping in a vehicle at the end game unless you really, really desperately need to move from a bad position to a better position. I don't know if there's anybody in here. I just fast forwarded up to this random spot. Holy shit, there's a guy in here. <laughs> uh, again, in this fight right here, um, I would have approached this completely different. The moment I got up here and I knew there was an enemy here, I would have threw the sun from the window. The moment, the moment I got a hit marker, vaulted through the window and get the fight. You kind of sitting in the front of the window and slowly peeking. Again, there's a lot of people left on the map. Um, there's a lot of hills behind you. You could have been sniped. You could have been shot at. Um, very dangerous putting yourself in a position to play it slow like that when you had a concussion. Just throw it in there. I know you want to hold on to the concussion. That's fine. I, I get that. Um, and it may save you later on, you know, but still, but still, I would, I definitely would have utilized it.
Oh, that sucks. This AR is built like absolute ass. <laughs> I'm going to start doing uh, gun builds on my channel, guys. If you want me to do gun builds on my channel, please let me know in the comment section below if it's something you're truly interested in. I know a lot of YouTubers already do it. That's why I stay away from doing it. I like to stick in my own lane. But if you guys want me to go ahead and spread awareness to some, to some good weapon builds, um, let me know. Now, before he got shot at, I did notice this guy. When you look through the door, there's a guy sitting right here. I know that because when you play this game long enough, you start to learn what the trees look like. There's no tree so detailed that there's just a little stump growing out the side. This is definitely an enemy's arm, and you can tell right here when he starts getting shot at. Watch right there. Tracers, dead body. Boom. It is what it is. Um, I don't know exactly. Oh, there he is. I must say, I don't know exactly where it came from, but there she blows. Ooh. The enemy. We spectated a gameplay a couple days ago where the guy we were spectating, every time he got shot in the open, he would line up the cover, line up the tree with who was shooting at him. So what I mean by that is instead of the enemy sidestepping out here in the open, he should have lined his body up with the tree, hid behind the tree, and walked up to the tree and got cover. If the enemy would have done that, he would have been, assuming the other guy didn't kill him or shoot at him, he would have been in perfect prime time to gatekeep your ass. He would have been in perfect prime time. Um, but it, it worked out. Now we're sitting on three people left, two enemies remain, and you're really you're in a good position to be honest. You're in a really good position because the high ground in this situation isn't super broken. The high ground exposes themselves to the low ground because there's no rocks. There's a couple of trees, but there's not much. It's just an open hill, so you're really not in a bad position. And again, I always tell you guys to get hard, high ground. There's always prefer high ground. The guy, you're right. There's a guy directly to your right, instantly in transition. You can hear him coughing the gas, and now he's walking up to you. This should be a GG as long as you catch on and get the kill. Boom. Hey. Boom. Yeah. yeah, baby. Yo, GG, my dude. Yo, King Keithius, thank you again for submitting me your gameplay, brother. I really enjoyed spectating this entire match. I really did. Um, A lot of lessons. This is probably one of my most insightful videos I think I've ever put out. Um, as far as the beginning, like usually in game, I get super in depth. Your in game really wasn't that in depth, but your beginning game was so it just it, it nailed a lot of points. So thank you for submitting the gameplay, brother. Again, it was an honor, the privilege. Thank you for sharing it with the wolf pack. One thing I like to see from you again, just your ADS sensitivity. I promise you, you will get better instantly. It's not going to be like, oh, I got to practice. Like I get used to it. You should see an instant difference. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel right now. Let's get to 50,000 subscribers and also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And again, if you guys are tired of playing by yourselves, join the Discord community. The link will be in the description below. But you guys have a good one. And until next time, boys, good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed the content. I hope that you're having fun with Warzone. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you check out one of these two videos right here. And as always, subscribe by hitting the button over my left-hand shoulder. Y'all have a good one and keep on improving.